Hey everyone, it's King Miami, and in today's video, we're gonna get you started with World's Desktop Editor. So to get started, once you open the app, you'll click on New World at the top right hand of the screen. That'll go ahead and generate us a brand new world, and it should look exactly like this. Um, so from here, um, we'll get started with how to move around and navigate and utilize uh, the editor. Before we do, we're gonna cheat a little bit. We're gonna skip ahead to Gen AI. We're gonna give them a prompt. So while we're going and explaining the uh, rest of the panels, we're gonna have this guy work. So we're not waiting for him later. So we'll just do a quick prompt, like um, create a script when a player, let's have a player enters a trigger to display a random animal name on a text gizmo. So this is a pretty uh, a cool tool, it's it's newer. Um, and so we're just gonna let that simmer and we're gonna cover um, the rest of the panels here. So we have the hierarchy here on the far left. Uh, currently we just have one lonely spawn point, um, but we can filter by the type of gizmo it is, by a gameplay tag if it has one, if it has a particular script attached, um, or we can search by name here too in the hierarchy. Um, up right above that, we have our build tools. Um, so we have um, here, we have different mesh shapes. If you um, want to utilize, you can. I'll just pull out a couple here so we can kind of fill up that hierarchy. Um, and then right below shapes, we have our gizmos. So here uh, we do have different things like spawn points, mirrors, um, environment, gizmo lighting, static lighting, projectiles, ray cast, um, custom UI gizmos, IWP gizmos, and we have even NPC gizmos. So let's pull one of those guys out too, why not? And we will get into this last pen on the right here. You see, you might see that changing as I'm pulling things in. We'll cover that in a little bit. Um, we do have colliders if you if you um, like to use. And hold on, was there one more thing? Empty object, very important. Uh, this is perfect use for attaching scripts. So, so you just click on that, bring that out, and then we'll, this is great to use for positioning. Um, like cameras, for example, if I want the mobile camera to move to a specific position and rotation, like a fixed camera, uh, these are great for that as well. Um, or you just attach scripts to them. All right, next on, we have our systems where we create uh, leaderboards, uh, player persistent variable, group variables, world variables, um, in-world purchase items, uh, avatar um, purchase items, and quest. So that will all be taken care of here. Uh, next, we have the scripts, where we already see a couple scripts created that I did not create. It was our Gen AI. Um, to show you how to create a script, we just click the plus sign. Pretty simple. We'll do a typical hello world, hit enter, and it will go ahead and generate. Uh, once it's saving, we can click on these three dots. We'll click open. Actually, I think you could just double click on it now as well. That's something a little bit newer. And you can see the script here. We won't... Um, do any scripting right now in this video, but let's just quickly click over to what the Gen AI did here. So we have um, five different animal names and we have a trigger, pretty simple stuff. Um, but yeah, so that's our script uh, panel. We have the settings icon. In case you're gonna use something like camera API, you wanna click on this API, you wanna make sure that's toggled on. In this case it is. But if, um, if there's other APIs you might be using for like NPC, you might wanna tackle that on, click apply and then you can use um, it without getting any errors. So just make sure if, if something's wrong, it might be didn't toggle one of those APIs on. All right, now we're at the Gen AI um, panel, which is here. If you just click this, it's just gonna toggle it. Um, so for example, let's just show you that. Okay, and just toggle it back to bring it back. And in the Gen AI, we just uh, did the cre um, creator assistant. You can also do uh, 3D model meshes, uh, sky boxes, texture, um, sound effects, and ambient audio as well. And I think there's more to come. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna close that because we just used that and we'll test what it did here in a second. Um, there we go. So the stuff is over here. Do, I, do we see a trigger gizmo? So let's go to our hierarchy real quick and let's put this in action. Let's see if we find any trigger gizmos. We do, here's the trigger zone. So click on that and there it is. Um, we're gonna focus with F. Oh, okay, they put it together with the text gizmo, interesting. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and use our transform uh, tools right here. 
Um, so, all right, let me not filter. Let's clear all. So we have a trigger gizmo and the text gizmo are just, all right, so we're gonna click on this move and I think they're just on top of each other. They're not grouped. Okay, yeah, so they're independent. Um, and as you click on these, you'll notice our properties panel on the far right side, it will give us the position, rotation, the scale, and depending on the gizmo or object, you'll have a different properties panel. So this is a text gizmo with those attributes. I can type here actually hello, and there we, and you're good updates. We can attach a script to that. Uh, let's click on the trigger gizmo real quick. We have options for players or a tagged object. It is enabled. And this one does have a script attached, which is generated by the uh, AI. So this one had, does have a script attached. Obviously, I cannot touch that from up, up from all the way up there. So we're going to move this to 000 by just typing it in right here. All right. And now uh, we need to do the same for the text. The text will use um, uh, these over here, our, our transform tools. So we'll just move it forward a little bit. You can also click on this like uh, snapping and you know it'll, it'll move according to that so if i want to let's move it up to like two so it moves a little bit better there we go bring it down oh, a little bit too far down let's bring it up all right and now we need to let's just turn that off so we could get a little bit more precision here all right I'm going to move this in this direction. Now it is backwards, so we'll toggle to the rotate right here. Same thing, if I want to go by a certain amount of degrees, like here, let's do 45 degrees. And now when we rotate, it will rotate in 45 degree intervals. There we go. Perfect. It's facing me. Good. Um, let's scale this trigger up. So I'm going to click on the trigger. We're going to go to the scale tool, and we can um, go on a particular um, direction, it, was, it, it can scale on an axis, or we can do, um, if we want to do a uniform, we'll just have to click in the middle there. And there we go. I already kind of made it wide, didn't I? So let's just go ahead and even that out. <laughs> That's a pretty big trigger, but we know we won't miss it. Uh, there is an empty object there at zero, zero, zero. Let's see if it's, is it this one? Nope, that's a different empty object. It's the animal name controller. I guess we'll leave it there. And that is also running a different script, and that's the one that's attached to the text gizmo. All right, cool. So let's go ahead um, and we're going to start the world sim up here. And it's already picking a random name. It might be because sometimes that happens. Um, we can turn the world sim off. We can reset the world sim. Let's put this trigger, this spawn point up a little bit because I kind of want to have a cool fall effect when I spawn in. And now to preview with your avatar, you're just going to click this play, enter preview button, this enter preview mode with this play button. So let's go ahead and press that and boom. So I entered, it gave me a bear. Let's walk out the trigger, walk back in, gave me a lion. So good job AI. Um, one prompt and it set everything up for you. So that's pretty cool. You can see that I'm. it's looking like I'm on a phone, like this This works here and I can click this button to jump. Um, so I'm previewing an iPhone 15. I'm gonna hit escape a couple of times to exit preview mode. And here we can configure the device. If it's a web, a mobile, a iPhone, Samsung, you can make those choices there. And this, you can send a preview link to your cells, which is pretty cool um, to your phone and you'll get the notification on your um, app, and then you can preview this world on your phone itself. All right, uh, here we have the camera uh, speed. If you want to do that, you can right-click on the viewport, hold uh, down right-click, and then use uh, WASD to move the camera around, or you can just use your arrow keys as well, and then right-click to turn the camera, uh, and that's how you can move around in the viewport. All right. And then uh, last thing but not least is our asset library. As you can see here, we have a public asset library by creators for creators, as well as we have Meta providing um, amazing assets uh, to us as well. You can filter, you can search by the latest, the type, the category, um, and there's just hunt, probably thousands at this point. I don't know how many thousands, but a lot of uh, assets. You can just grab them, pull them out. If you want to look at them before you pull them out, you can just click on it and, and the 
on this panel here, you'll see um, the vertex count, the textures, um, the asset ID information when it was up created, etc. If you see these green icons, it contains a script. Um, so there's a script that is attached with that asset. So that could be to your benefit. And last thing that we want to cover is our console. So if you're doing any console logs or you have any errors in your script, you will find them here in the console. They will populate. So the AI did a good job. Uh, no errors to report here. And that is your get started with the world's desktop editor. Can't wait to see what you guys create. Looking forward to it. And I will see you in the next video.